everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is the final week of us diving into the topic of worship as a lifestyle. Balia Schlink once said, Do not be lazy. Run each day's race with all your might, so that at the end you will receive the victory wreath from God. Keep on running, even when you have a fall. The victory wreath is won by him who does not stay down, but always gets up again, grasps the banner of faith, and keeps on running in the assurance that Jesus is victor. In this episode, we will be speaking on perseverance. We've invited Luke van der Merwe, Luanda Guabeni, Ntando Khatebe, and Ruzon Pinar to talk about why perseverance is needed in a lifestyle of worship. Stay tuned for the conversation. We have an amazing panel with us today. To my left, we have Luke. He is the hub director. Ruzon, she is the music director. Luanda is a worship leader here at Hatfield. And Intando is a worship volunteer. And we are so happy to have you guys. Thank you for your time. Today, we're speaking about perseverance. Who wants to tackle the fundamental question? What is perseverance? Go, guys. <laughs> Sure. Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll jump in at the, at the thought of the question, what is perseverance? I think of Galatians 6, verse 9. Um, it, uh, Paul says, you know, don't grow weary in doing good, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Um, I think that is such a great picture of what perseverance is. And in, I suppose in, in simple terms, what I would say is perseverance is keeping on, keeping on. You know, not... Not letting the, the the will die, but to keep on going. That's what I would say. Yeah, I, I, you know, if I look at life, you know, life is full of valleys and it's full of mountain tops, and uh, I think we all experience just how easy it is to to do things or to keep going when um, you know the resources are all there, my energy levels are up, you know, my soul tank is filled, you know, everything is going great, uh, but when you hit the the middle of that marathon or you hit the valley and you go through some stuff, you know, of life, that I find is when perseverance kicks in. That ability just to go like, you know what, you know, despite all this or despite what I'm going through, the Lord is good. The Lord is faithful and he's worthy of my worship. And I find that is where perseverance really has a role to play in our lives here on earth. And I think just to add to that, it's simply pushing through. Yeah, yeah I, w I was just reminded, um, I was, you know, I was thinking uh, what Luke said when perseverance kicks in. But, um, uh, you know, it's just as simple as if we don't have any struggles in life, we, we won't have any perseverance. Because it's something, it's a core thing that you need to get through. Um, to get through struggles in life. Mm. And I don't know one person that has not had something difficult in their life happen to them or, um, you know, different different circumstances, difficult circumstances that they have to go through. Um, and uh, it's pushing through those things. But you <laughs> you need something special in your heart to, to really be able to activate that. So, yeah. Picking up on what you said there, on about needing something special in your heart, could we then agree on the fact that perseverance isn't just making it through things? It's not just, you know, I saw I had a tough time. This was a difficult month. Ah, I survived it. We keep going. <laughs> or, is, or can that be, you know, described as perseverance? I think it's a part of it, but I don't, uh, I don't think that is what it fully is. I think a big part of, of perseverance is it's a response to God. Um, uh, it's part of our response in worship to, to who God is and part of our response in, in praise of what he's done for us. And um, I always look at it as a, as a habit. It's something that you have to, to practice <laughs> and something that you have to do often for it to become uh, second nature in your life. Um, and unfortunately, the thing that makes this topic tough is um, you're going to have to stay certain things in the eye um, to be able to exercise that muscle of, of perseverance. Um, but definitely it's, it's part of a response in worship. 
I think that's actually so good um, that it's a response in worship. Um, to add to that, it's also knowing your why. And and I think in touching with what you said about it being a heart response, God has to reveal to you why you're doing it and why you must push through and why you must stick it out and why you must um, carry on in the course that he set you on. Um, because if you don't, then if you don't know why you're doing it or why um, you are persevering or maybe let me put it this way if God hasn't revealed it to you or or if you haven't sought God out for that then it's going to be difficult to persevere it's going to be difficult to endure and um, I think it also applies in life in general if you don't have a why for something that you're doing then you don't quite have a a purpose or a, a direction for wherever you're going or whatever you're doing. So I think it also applies in that sense. When you, when you talk about why, I'm often thinking of, um, of the eternal perspective. So by eternal perspective, I mean is that um, we have a limited number of days here on earth and then, uh, then we are trans- transformed into the next world. The Lord takes us into a place where we are fully present in his presence. We see him face to face. And it's in that place where I go like, then when you get to that place, you will know fully that it was absolutely worth it. You know, everything that you've been through, everything that you've gone through, um, and that probably you, uh, well, fortunately in heaven, there are no regrets, but you probably, if in my soul, would go like, ooh, you know. <laughs> if only I had dug a little deeper there. If only I had poured out more. So I'm trying to bring in that eternal perspective from that side of the veil, if I can put it that way, into this time and space world that we live in, where we have trials and we have tribulations, and to go like, Oh, but for the glory of God, you know, if I can see that then, if I can put myself there, then I can say, oh, yes, I can persevere. I can go through this. You know, I can push through that, uh, you know, where, where maybe it's not even difficult situations, but it's just long, tedious situations. You know, I think of Moses on the in the desert for 40 years tending sheep, you know, you know, I mean, if you think it was if you think the desert is quiet now, think how quiet it was. However many thousands of years ago that he lived, there was nothing out there, you know. And 40 years goes by, nothing happens. But one day he has an experience with God that transformed and touched his life. So maybe even just the perseverance for the things that we do experience here, you know, that God goes like, I'm there. I'm with you. I'm in it for this life and for the next. And that eternal perspective draws me forward. Um, And I would say it's just, it's it's the power of God in me to do it. I don't have power in myself actually to do it. It's his power in me. Yeah, just on that, when you were saying um, the time and space thing, you know, we we very much live in time and space. and I was, I was actually just meditating on this topic and I thought to myself, but th- this is from personal experience. You, you hear so many times that people say, oh, it's a daily choice, you know. It's making that choice daily of you're going to push through and you're going to do this thing. And for, uh, you know, for me, I found that it, it, it isn't always a daily choice um, because some days your body is going to say no or your mind's going to say no. Because that's that's where a big part of perseverance is 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 in your mind, you know, in your emotions, in your thoughts, the way that you approach things. And some days you wake up and it's just like, nope, I am just not in my own strength. I'm just not able to do this. But what I found, um, you know, strengthens that perseverance muscle is um, consistency in the decisions that you make. Even if it's not a daily decision and even if some, some days you feel like, oh, you know, actually I can't do this or uh, my body is not able today. You know, my, my spirit is willing, my, my mind is willing, but my body is just lacking a bit. You know, whatever the circumstances are, um, what I've found is, is if you make 
a, a constant decision there's, and there's consistency in the type of decisions you make, it becomes easier and easier and easier to persevere through circumstances, mm -hmm. whether tedious or difficult or easy or whatever the type of circumstances may be, you know. It becomes easier um, because there's consistency. You constantly working towards that thing, that same thing. And the thing can even be um, to choose God over your circumstances. You know, that's the biggest thing that I've learned about persevering is um, when I con constantly and consistently choose God over my circumstances, the circumstances become something that I can handle. You know, it doesn't matter how difficult it is, you know. And, you know, we've been through difficult things. Each person here can say, Yo, I've been through a really difficult thing and that thing almost knocked me, but it didn't because I continually chose God above my circumstances. It's when we diminish God and we feed our circumstances that, um, that we can't persevere and we feel like we're drowning and we can't carry on and life is too hard and it's just too difficult. But when I choose God, you know, consistently over my circumstances it becomes something I can handle and something I can handle and then I grow that muscle I exercise that muscle I I I get that habit of um you know uh, choosing God first and then dealing with the circumstances through the Holy Spirit you know dealing with the circumstances through um through the guidance of of the Lord's voice you know dealing with the circumstances with eternal perspective because you're never going to get eternal perspective if you don't choose God. That's the, that's the ultimate thing. You have to choose him first and say, Lord, I am, um, I'm going to choose you even though this is really so difficult for me, or even though I really don't want to sit in this meeting or whatever, you know, I'm going to choose you. And that thing all of a sudden just becomes something you can handle. So, and, and that's where perseverance kicks in. And then, sorry, just to add on that, um, <laughs> it's sometimes, it depends on the season of your life, but it's, it's often something that you can lose when you lose that train of thought, you know, and lose that, um, when you, when you slack a little bit and you, you lose that muscle. <laughs> um, but, um, but I found that, um, perseverance can be maintained in your life when you when you continue making those decisions. It's just all about consistency. It really is all about consistency. But um, um, but it's not necessarily in my life. I haven't found that it's something that's magically there. You know, it's not like one one morning I wake up and I have all the perseverance in the world. You know, and I can do anything. And now I'm just like this superhuman. Um, it's a it's a journey. It's a, it's a it's, it's a journey. It's the best way I can describe it. So, yeah. so you touched on it there, but it was on maintaining perseverance, um, being making those choices consistently. So consistency being one of the things that will help maintaining perseverance. What else would you guys say in the day-to-day -day life? What, what, what can one do to maintain that attitude, that mentality, that, that, that time with with God, what, what, can, what do you put in place to help maintain perseverance? I, I think it's how you persevere is important. You know, you can persevere sucking lemons all day <laughs> <laughs> and it ain't look so pretty, you know. <laughs> so, um, uh, thanksgiving, thankfulness, it, there, there's just something around that being thankful for the glass that is half empty as opposed to the glass that is half full. There's, there's such a key in thankfulness and thanksgiving to the Lord that actually gets you through and to endure well and, and endure with a, with a positive attitude and a smile on your face because he's actually given me so much and I've got so much to be thankful for. I think um, on top of what Luke said, um, for me, it's also a matter of perspective and um, Razan touched on it as well. Um, I think of the, I think it's a hymn, Turn Your Eyes on Jesus. It says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow fadely, well, will grow strangely dim in the light and glory, in the light of his 
there we are. <laughs> the light of his glory, and, of his glory and grace. And, grace. <laughs> um, and, and I think for me, um, personally, I know that when I have to persevere through something, I have to shift my perspective, um, shift my thoughts, shift my minds, the attitude, the small decisions that I have to make on the daily um, so that my perspective shifts from the issue or the problem or whatever it is that's bringing me to the point where I'm like, okay, I have to push through, I have to persevere. And then once I've done that and I've turned my attention on the Lord, then somehow I find myself on the other side and then, you know, you look back, you're like, oh, okay. Wasn't so bad. Wasn't so bad, I think. Huh? <laughs> I think. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, okay, all right. Then you, you push on and you're on to the next thing. And then, you know, it kind of like it shifts that mountain because things do happen in our lives and we go through trials and we go through tribulations. But if your perspective is or your look outlook and your eyes are on God, then you get to the other side and you've made it. And it's not as big as you thought it was initially. So I think perspective also matters. Maybe to paraphrase somewhat what Luanda was saying, um, not to take away from what you said. <laughs> um, it's, it's really in making sure that you don't look at the problem. Because if you, um, somewhat, somewhat to what Rosanna had mentioned, that we diminish God. If you look yeah. at the problem, God eventually diminishes because you keep looking at the problem, the problem, the problem. You forget who God is. Mm. Um, he's the one that, you know, uh, you read about it in the Old Testament, all the stuff that he did. And then Paul unpacks it. Well, the different writers of the New Testament unpack what, what is actually happening in this grand story. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it is definitely about perspective. Um, perseverance is also... I suppose the stuff that you can do in the day to maintain your, your, your perseverance is to not be the center of your story. Because if you, if, you if you are, I suppose, what I've seen in, in a lot of scenarios in my life, um, particularly in marriage, <laughs> 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 if it's difficult to persevere through certain things yeah. um, because I am the subject of this whole thing. <laughs> um, but at the point where... Um, I'm sacrificing for the good of my wife and myself or the greater family. Mm. You get through something and then like Rhonda said, you look back, you're like, <laughs> was that really a problem? Mm. Um, and then there are obviously other issues that come up in life which require you to completely just um, fall in God's hands. Yeah. And he's the one then that carries you through certain other things. Mm. But um, I think I think for me the main thing is just m remove yourself. You're not you're not the the subject of the story here. There is there is a story that's bigger than you. Yeah, a, a great analogy for me is <laughs> is um, is keeping your eyes on that price. So for me, if I have to walk 300 meters in a shopping mall, I'm exhausted, <laughs> like exhausted. <laughs> but hey, man. Give me 20 kilometers in the mountains, I can do it. Why? Because I got my eye on that prize, yeah. you know. And it's also like that thing. It's like when you're going up, man, it's tough, you know, one foot in front of the, in, in front of the, the other. When you get to the top, you go like, hey, man, how's this possible? It was done, you know. I, I went walking with my wife uh, the other day, and she's not a walker at all. But somehow I managed to get her she up. She loves a, you a lot, eh? <laughs> <laughs> somehow I managed to get her up a, 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 a little hill. And she actually, when we got to the top, she looked back and she said, wow, look how far we've come. I said, yeah, babe. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what happens. And that's the perseverance aspect in the middle of it, you know. If you don't have your eye on that prize, uh, you just want to give up. And quit, you know. If I think about, uh, you know, we use the word endurance here, endurance runners, you know, or people that do endurance sport. I don't have any of that in me. But as I look at them and as I watch them and we've got one uh, runner who's done many comrades in our worship team. And if you talk to him about when he says you hit the wall at like, you know, 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers and you still got another 20 or 25 to go. And he, he just talks about your eye on the prize and looking beyond it's so important. Mm. And I think a, a, something also important to note is perseverance can be a heavy thing if you make it a heavy thing. 
Um, but there's so much joy in persevering um, through a situation or, you know, pushing through, you know, all those different terms that we use, you know. There's so much joy when you actually reach the other side yeah. and you can look back Plenty and see joy. that is where God um, came through for me and this is where God came through for me and I had this breakthrough here in my mind and I had this breakthrough here in my body and I had this breakthrough here in my relationship and I had this breakthrough you know when you have that bird's eye view um, you can see you can just look back with with thankfulness you know as you mentioned you can really that's the only response you can have of um, of having that perseverance and it brings so much joy and it 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 makes you grow it, you you don't have another choice than to grow when you when you persevere through something, um, and that joy is just it's unmatched. It's unmatched. Um, you know the the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, and you you really experience that mm. that joy and that strength um, when when you can look back on something and and you 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 can go like I experienced that. You know, mm. I allowed myself to experience it. But looking back, I can see all the breakthroughs and I can see all the testimonies and I can see um, every single thing that God did for me. And that is amazing. You know, that is amazing. So um, just to add on to that, as you're talking, I thought of an example. Um, grade four maths, long division. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I, I don't like, I mean, this is like way back when. I don't know if we still do long division in grade four now. They probably like do it in grade two. I don't know. But <laughs> I remember being so distraught um, in grade four and um, my mom, bless her heart, she came down to my level and she took me through it step by step, step by step. And what I learned, once I finally grasped long division at that point, I was so happy, the joy. And I was also now showing off as well in class. Like, Haha, I can do long division and you can't. Let me show you how to do it, you know. But also later on in um, the rest of the grades, high school, that long division came in at a so handy and I mean I could solve now other equations much quicker and much better because I grasped the concept behind it and if I hadn't pushed through if I hadn't persevered when my mom was like taking me through it or you know even when my teachers were trying to take me through it then I wouldn't have um, been able to later rely on those skills I gained at that point and perseverance is like that as well in that in that moment in time, you're pushing through, you're not sure why, you're not sure why you need to be focusing on what you need to be focusing on. But then later on, it happens that um, you remember that you went through a certain period and then you're like, oh, this is how I did it. Maybe if I apply the same, a similar principle or the similar thought, pat similar thought patterns to what I had been doing at that point, maybe this will help me through. And then it does actually, you get through the next obstacle or the next trial or the next situation you find yourself in um, using the skills you learned at that point. So um, you grow, like Rosanna was saying, um, it, is, it does also have a solid element of growth in it. Luanda, earlier you were speaking about changing perspective. <clears throat> Now I'm thinking of the scripture in James that tells us, count it all joy, right? When you face trials and tribulations of many kinds, because it bows perseverance. How do you, maybe it's a two-part question, why should you and how do you change that perspective to joy in the middle, in the midst of whatever circumstance, circumstance trial, tribulation you might be facing? What's the value in changing that perspective to joy? Um, I think it was you, Razan, who mentioned that there's times when you wake up in the morning, you're not feeling like persevering or you don't feel like that that is the action or that's something that you should be doing at that point, moment in time. But if you have your eye and your perspective on the why, I think, then you are able to say, OK, I'm not feeling it right now or I'm not. It's not giving. Ah, It's not giving. <laughs> um, but if I know that there's that and I'm going towards that because then you don't have like what what's the what's the, the next option what are you gonna are you gonna cry and then what's the crying gonna do I mean crying is great because then you kind of release all of these other things and you're like oh, okay but then what's the next step I think it's about the next step so 
Because also a lot of the times you don't know what the next step is going to be. But then until you fix your your mind and your thoughts on actually getting to the next step, then God will reveal what the next step is. But you need to have fixed your perspective to that. I also think um, nobody in the history of anything would have ever persevered if they only reacted or responded from the emotions they were feeling. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a, a, a tool that I sometimes use um, to change my perspective about a situation is, um, and just, just as a side note, it takes a lot of effort, especially for emotional people like myself, um, because you just feel everything so deeply and you experience everything to such an extreme level, you know, mm. to then make the decision to be like, I'm not going to act out of this emotion. Um, I'm going to instead change my perspective to, um, to what God sees. And you, you can't do that just by clicking your fingers or whatever. You have to ask those questions. You have to have the, com the conversation with the Holy Spirit to be like, Lord, what is it that that you actually want out of this situation? What is it that you actually see in this situation? Um, help me to see it too. Because obviously I'm not seeing it. <laughs> obviously I'm responding from emotion and it's not working. So help, you know. Um, and I, I just, um, it's a, it's supernatural. It's not something that we have a recipe for. It's not something you, you have a recipe for in your mind to be like, um, yeah, I can do this and this is how you do it. And and you know, pint for pint, you know, that's that's how it works. It's um it's it's very much um just submitting under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And then then a shift comes. Yeah. And I actually even wanna um be as bold as to say, um or rather to change the fake it till you make it to faith it till you make it. Come on, sister. <laughs> that's right. Well <laughs> because, <laughs> because um it is it comes down to um holy spirit and then you do it because then also again you look back and then you're like gee wow did i how did i and then you're like you know you, you could have never done it in your own strength in your own power you needed something other than yourself to get you through and to get you to where you needed to be yeah i sorry sorry i read i read something once that says we, are, we stay faithful in our perseverance because, because God is faithful in loving us and helping us, you know. And when you look at it from that perspective, it's just like, I can't do anything else. Yeah. I have to go through this situation and I have to allow the Holy Spirit to, um, to minister to my heart and to transform my mind to be able to, to push through this. I think one thing to not forget is um, Romans 8.29, that we are, we are being formed into the image of Christ, and he was one of the people that persevered a lot. Mm. So if he went through it, who am I to not go through it? Um, <laughs> and I think um, another, th uh, another thing to consider would be uh, perseverance is actually a big boulder in the building of one's character. Yeah. A person who hasn't persevered through much doesn't really have much of a strong character. Um, that might be a strong thing to say. <laughs> but as I think about it, it's like I, I, I haven't necessarily come across people who have fortified character that haven't persevered much. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I take great um, solace in the fact that, like the writer of Hebrews says, that uh, whatever we're going to go through, Christ has been through it. Mm -hmm. You know, he was there. He's taken it through for us. Mm -hmm. And so he's made a fresh new living way for us. Um, he empowers us. His presence empowers us to actually walk the way that he's walked. And uh, uh, for that, I'm most encouraged, actually, and thankful. I hope that these words have helped you guys find faith and encouragement to help you make it. I hope that these words have really changed your perspective. Thank you guys so much. And I hope that perseverance is something that you guys can honestly find joy in, as Rizwan was speaking about, um, just because, as Ntando said as well, the character development in it, the things that the Lord has planned for you on the other side, the joy that you will experience once you see the Lord's plan come to fruition. Um, I really pray that that has 
been changed in your mind, transformed in your mind. And I hope that you guys look forward to pushing through, to persevering from this point on. We pray that the Lord goes with you and helps you in this time um, because we know, as they've mentioned, things are real, things are painful, life does happen, but God is with you every step of the way. So we pray that blessing over you. Thank you guys so much for joining us. That was our final episode, and I must say, I have really enjoyed this series. If you would like to go deeper on the topic of worship, why don't you join our Modular Worship Academy? It is a part-time discipleship course oriented around worship lifestyle. It is suitable for young and old. Everyone with a heart for worship is welcome. This academy runs over five weekends and covers our big five topics, the heritage of worship, the theology of worship, excellence, worship and the prophetic, and worship in spirit and in truth. If you have a music ministry calling on your life, consider doing our full-time worship academy. It covers the following topics, worship theology, musical styles and interpretation, listening abilities, songwriting and recording, rehearsal techniques, and team dynamics over the span of five months. If you're interested and would like more information, send us an email at worshipacademy at hatfield.co.za. We would love to hear from you. Well, that's all from me. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Bye.